What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Transformers 1. I don't know if y'all know this about me. I grew up in the 80s, born in 1977. The Transformers was my bread and butter growing up. When they hit the, when they hit the TV streets, I was all in. I wanted all the toys, I loved them. I, was, I couldn't get enough of the Transformers. They were my favorites. That's still my favorite cartoon growing up. And so, you know, I have a connection to the Transformers that's, 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 that's marinated in time and history. Optimus Prime is very important to me as a hero. You know, the movies have been miss and miss. I will give the movie Bumblebee some credit. I'll give that first Transformers from 2007 some credit. And Beast Wars was solid too, or Rise of the Beast or whatever. But the rest of those, you know, I haven't seen all of the animated projects that were for streaming platforms and TV, but like the live action joints, it was just like, it was too much human. Too many humans running around. And for me, I've never needed the human element. I've never needed that. Even back in the day, in the cartoon, back in the day, you had Spike and his dad and his son Daniel. It was like, I never needed the human being element. And I know they did that so we could feel like, oh, we're a part of the Transformers world and you know what I'm saying, the humans are interacting. But I was just like, I don't need this. I don't need this. With the movies, you know, they got all these human characters and be like, man, just, just give us the robots. We got, enough, we got enough human shit going on. I see humans every day, man. Robots. I want robots that transform into other stuff from a different planet. That's what I want and need. Hush. Transformers 1 gives us just that. It's a prequel. It goes all the way back to a young Optimus Prime and a young Megatron when they was friends. They was doing this. They had the fist bump going. You know what I'm saying? On another planet, this was the... That meant something. The clink, the clink. They did this several times. Man, I'm glad we friends. Me too. Like, oh, man. Knowing what they're going to become, it was just heartbreaking. As soon as they did the first, we friends. I was like, they won't be for long. <laughs> they won't be for long. It's a nice prequel with not a human being in sight. Now, one human in this thing, I'm like, man, sign me up. Chris Hemsworth plays Orion Pax. Orion Pax is the, that's Optimus Prime's given name. That's the name he was raised on, you know what I'm saying? And D, I think D9 or D something was Megatron's name. He didn't even have a, a full name. He had no free, he was just a number. He was like D7 or something like that. And his voice, Orion Pax is voiced by Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Henry is the young Megatron. Scarlett Johansson does voice work in here. Keegan-Michael Key is in this thing. Steve Buscemi is Starscream. Come on, man. You can't go wrong with this. And so I'm watching this and I'm just like, I'm loving every minute of this. Because it, it just showed us where they came from, the roots of it all and how they became what they became, how they became, you know, arch nemesis of one another. And I feel like the, the best hero villain story arcs is when there was a deeper connection between the two. Uh, they didn't have to be the best of friends back in the day, but like when you have that element of just like, you know, they were once friends and now there's a different weight on every move that they make and all the animosity and whatever whatever they're carrying for one another. It just makes the, the rivalry resonate that much more. And I'm just like, wow. To see how Optimus ended up becoming Optimus Prime and like what led him into his mindset of, of why he's so honorable and noble. And then to see Megatron's transformation into why he became who he became, why did he become so evil? Like what changed him? What brought this on? Was he born that way? We get the we get the root of the Decepticon logo and why that is what it is and like where it came from. And I was just like, wow, they really just they really taking us back to the core of everything and showing us how, you know, how Optimus met Bumblebee and like, you know, Jazz and Ironhide and them. And it was just like Yes. So I was watching it. It was funny. 
It was uh, it was playful in parts, but it was like they had some real emotional stakes in there too. And I was just like, man, this is fantastic. Granted, this aimed towards the kids. It's a little bit more aimed towards the kids, but forget all that, man. I was all in. I was like, man, f these kids, man. Cause there was a moment in there where Bumblebee said something funny and I heard some kids laughing like, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, the kids. What the hell are you doing in here? Get your kid ass out of here, man. This is for us. You know what I'm saying? That kid don't know nothing about the Transformers in the 80s. Get this kid out of here, man. And this, this, this one took me back. It's not as dark as the Transformers, the movie from 1984. If any, if any of you have seen Transformers, the movie from 1984, that was some of the most traumatizing stuff. They took all our favorite Transformers and, and killed off a lot of them, Optimus Prime included. Do you know they ripped our hearts out as kids? In 1984, I think it might have came out in 85, I was a good seven, eight. I'll give you eight. You know, just to round up, because I saw it on video. It took every molecule of my being not to fold up and ball up and cry when Optimus Prime died. The only reason I didn't, it was it was some girls over there that was cute. I was at my brother's girlfriend's house, and his his girlfriend's sisters was cute. And I was like, man, I can't sit there. And that was, that was like my debut over there. And I didn't want them to see me crying balled up. You kidding me? But I was fighting for my life. Remember when Optimus Prime turned colors? He just turned black and white. That's that was my insides. All the color just va I was just like, if I was by myself, I'd have been curled up like Ace Ventura in that shower. But I held it together. I held it together. With this movie, man, if you care about the Transformers in any way, shape, or form, if you are interested in the lore and the storyline and the characters, Transformers 1 is the thing to watch. But forget all that. You want to know the smooth jazz review of Transformers 1. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Transformers 1 four. I'm going to give it four and a half saxophones out of five. It's just, I don't have anything negative to say about it. I feel like the action mattered. The character development was there. I like what they what they did with established characters and got us to. I really felt like it was a it was a prequel done right, and it just made me appreciate them even more after seeing the origin. So, if you are into the Transformers, man, Transformers One is something to watch. Don't just think it's just for the kids, man. You are gonna enjoy it too. It made $25 million this weekend. I, I think it should make more, but you know what I'm saying? You got to get your asses to the theater and watch it because it's going to be one of those ones that's like, yo, that was fire. It's, it's, it's critically acclaimed. The people that have watched it, they've loved it. And it's like, and Optimus Prime is just, they be killing him off all the time and he be, he be coming back, but every time, I'll be like, the Optimus, man. Optimus is one of my favorite beings in, in the fictional lore, man. Shit. All right, peeps, that's my review of Transformers 1. Let me know what you thought of the movie in the comments section below. Also, how would you rank all the Transformers movies from 1984 all the way to all the Michael Bay joints, the Bumblebee, the Rise of the Beast, and this? Put those all together. I want to know your ranking. And who is your favorite? Give me your top three favorite Transformers of all time. Optimus Prime is up there for me, Jazz, and I would probably go Megatron. That might be my my favorite three, because Megatron is a fantastic villain. And you know what I'm saying? You're only, you're only as funky as your last villain, so, you know, I think that, that says a lot, man. But I want to know your three. Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and as usual, we out here.